Welcome back to Neil Oliver Live. Now, speculation surrounds the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin, chief of the Wagner mercenary group that's been so instrumental in Russia's efforts in Ukraine and elsewhere. Prigozhin died along with at least nine other people when the private plane in which they were travelling from Moscow to St Petersburg was brought down by a bomb hidden on board. The Wagner chief led a revolt. Some have called it a protest over relations with the Russian Ministry of Defence in June Joining me now to wonder about it all is academic and commentator Frank Ferredi. Hello, Frank. Thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Uh, it's, it's endlessly interesting, I'm sure. What would you say we are to make of what has happened this week past? Well, I think that um, he had to go because uh, as far as Putin was concerned, what Prigozhin did with his mutiny was to expose the fragility of the oligarchy's uh, position. I think people often think that Putin and, and, and the people around him are very powerful. They're totally in control. But although they are very authoritarian and they got a lot of resources, they're much more fragile than we often suspect. They're not really in control of this huge Russian federation that they are meant to be governing. And what, what happened in a sense was that what Prigozhin did was to demonstrate that a large section of the Russian security forces are not very happy with the conduct of the war, not very happy with, with the government, and they're quite prepared to support somebody who's uh, prepared to defy what has been happening so far. And uh, that exposure uh, really meant that Putin had to kind of clamp down sooner or later. Otherwise, his position would become even more fragile, because what he's really worried about is that other people are going to emulate what Prigozhin did, and other people are going to try it on as well. You say, you say that, but the action taken was was all over by tea time, effectively. You know, you say that this, that, that Putin and, and people around him that it was fragile, but when that unfolded, it was it was brought to a close very quickly, which which looked like something that was controlled. It was brought to a, it was brought to a close, but in the meantime, they shot down a helicopter, a lot of the. Uh, security forces that were meant to be protecting the big capital city refused to fight the Wagner group. It was very evident that the local population was either indifferent to what was happening or were actually quite supportive. So in many ways, I think that Pigosian made his point. He demonstrated that he's got a, a, a lot of clout. And I think in many respects, it was him that brought it to a close rather than the fact uh, that, uh, that the, the, the conflict was brought to a standstill. And uh, so we don't know actually what would have happened if they had carried on, but there was still a long way to go, a lot of potential for creating even more problems had they been, had they uh, decided to carry on with the mutiny. Frank, bear with me while I, while I uh, bring into the conversation my guest in the studio, Molly Kingsley. Molly, what did you make of the timing? You know, yes, we could all see that there might have been a, there, there, there were ways in which uh, Putin might have wanted to be rid of Prigozhin, but why do it in that way at this time? Honestly, I don't know. I think the thing that struck me actually is why bring down so many people. So there's the timing and there's fact, you know, there were also civilians on that flight. And actually, you know, as, as we were chatting about just off air, like you would have thought if you wanted to take out one or two, three people, you could do that without killing innocent people. But, you know, ultimately, this is one war criminal kills another war criminal, probably, maybe. <laughs> what about that, uh, Frank? You know, what, what, what about that? And also, um, why would someone like Prigozhin, who, who might have been feeling vulnerable, why was he flying over Russian airspace at all? Well, he's a very arrogant and very defiant individual. Uh, a few days before uh, his demise, he was producing a video, was telling the world that he's back in play, that his troops, the Wagner troops, are going to free Africa. Uh, he was asking for more recruits. He was asking Russian oligarchs to invest in his different businesses. So he felt very, very confident. Uh, I don't know why, but he felt really, really confident that he will be able to carry on because of the fact that he had all these mercenaries behind him. And I think that's the reason why he felt quite at ease going back and forth between Russia. He's been there before, after the coup. He, he went there about four or five weeks after the coup to meet some African leaders. And that was very surprising because nobody imagined that, you know, having been exiled, 
his exile, you know, was only three or four weeks long before he, before he returned to Russia. So, yeah. As we touched on earlier, though, the, the timing, you know, uh, Putin was there to be a star turn at BRICS. Um, so why do it now? And why do it in a way that, you know, brings down so many other people? You know, if, they, if, if, uh, if someone like Putin wanted Prigozhin gone, you know, it could have been done much more cleanly w without collateral harm. Why, why opt for this, this tactic? Well, I think from Putin's point of view, uh, there was uh, Prigozhin on the plane. There was the, uh, the guy who's the main financier, who's in charge of the money side of, of the Wagner Group. Uh, there were several key uh, security uh, players there who played a very important role in the, uh, in the, in the tactical and the logistics side of the, of, the, of the Wagner operation. So in a sense, he got rid of four people that were, as far as he was concerned, quite dangerous. And the fact that a few other people died in the process is really uh, uh, not a big issue for someone like Putin. He's not exactly uh, an individual who's got a, understands the quality of mercy. Frank Ferreri, it's, a, it's at the very least a story that will continue to fascinate me for the time being. Uh, I think there are many more uh, questions than answers available. Thank you for your insight, though, this evening.